See, I get a lot of articles written about me. You know, I was get I was getting a lot written about me uh, when the whole trial thing was going on. Um, I'm waiting on more news back from the appeal, so there's probably going to be another surge of articles uh, when that happens, which may be soon. Should be in the next month or so. It's not going to be good news, but you know, whatever. It's the way it goes. The law system's fucked. But sometimes I get the occasional article now that trickles through. You know, usually uh, call me a great big bad Nazi man, you know, lit literal fascist alt-right, blah, 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 by people who have absolutely no idea what a fascist or what alt-right even is. But occasionally you get, a, you get a funny one. And I just, this one didn't make me angry or anything. I, I actually found this, like, really funny. Because this, this is this... That this is scraping the bottom of the barrel and it's coming from Vice. Should you shag someone with bad politics? And uh, yes, I, I am mentioned <laughs> in this article. <clears throat> a fun Q&A to help you decide what's more important, your deeply held political convictions or your disgusting sexual appetite. Journalism. <laughs> jo journalism 2020. By Albert Moore, which is uh, a guy's name, so I'm uh, going to assume that whoever that is in the picture uh, isn't uh, Albert. I uh, did try to find him, he, he, didn't, he, doesn't, he does go on to insult my appearance a little bit. I did try to find pictures of Albert, but he's hidden his Twitter, he's hidden all his stuff. So, uh, given that, I mean, if Albert was a, very, was a right looker, I think we could assume he'd leave his picture up there, but let's, let's just assume that he's not. Sorry, I've just I've just woke up. I need to have my I need to have my ten coffees and sixty cigarettes in the morning to function. And everybody wonders why my fucking teeth are stained. Two weeks ago, I went on a date with a man who, after we'd got the small talk out of the way, declared himself an enthusiastic supporter of a late twentieth century dictator. And not even one of the cooler ones, <clears throat> like Fidel Castro or Scar from The Lion King. Yeah, I'm, go I'm going to take that one as a bit of a joke. Um, I hope they don't think Fidel Castro was cool. I, lo I love it whenever people go, I absolutely love Che Guevara. And then I tell them about La Cabana, <laughs> where Che Guevara executed homosexuals. I just, I just love watching that... Uh, realization of absolute shock and then being absolutely appalled at this person that they regarded as a hero. I was disturbed by this information, but instead of taking him to task, pulling out Wikipedia and sassily reading out a list of atrocities, you should look at the ones Fidel did, I calmly finished my drink and invited him back to my flat, where we made that foul grunting two-backed beast. I, I have sex. I have sex, don't you know? Well done. Congratulations. Mummy's proud. Uh, when I told a friend of mine what had happened, she accused me of only caring about politics when it affected me directly. Had my date instead said something nice about Michael Gove, she suggested I, I'd have launched into an exoriating rant before storming out. I was flattered by this characterization of myself as a political firebrand, if a selective one, but I'm not sure it's true. Had my date been a plain old Tory, I'm pretty sure I still would have taken him home put his penis in my mouth and stimulated it to the point of ejaculation because standards are important, right? Personally, I don't think I would fuck a Tory. I'm kidding. I don't really, I don't really care about uh, the political opinions of uh, whoever I have sex with. Depends on the political opinion, opinions, actually. I mean, if their political opinions were very extreme to the point of uh, wanting to cause harm to a person, then no, I would, uh, I would uh, not have sex with that question. With that question? With that person? Like I said, it's early. I've only had, this is the first, first of my many coffees, and this is only the third of my 60 cigarettes that I have in the morning. Right? I need, I need time to wake up. The answer to the question, should you date someone with bad politics, is so obvious it barely seems worth discussing. Of course not. Depends what bad politics is. I mean... If someone was a Bernie bro or a Democrat, I mean, I would probably date them. It would depend on, like, who they are as a person. Like, see, when it comes to the politics, apart from, obviously, if it's extreme politics, then that, that is a factor. 
but the things I look at is like I, whenever I'm dating someone, I watch the way they act and I watch the way they treat people. Like, say for example, the whole see if they treat you know like customer service or the wait the waitress like a piece of shit, then pff, that's a that's a red flag. You're gone. You're you're gone. Basically, if I if I see you acting like a cunt and I realise that you're a cunty person, you're you're gone. You're out the door right away. Um, also, if I catch you lying about stuff. That, that's a red flag. You're out the door right away if I catch you doing that. The disparity of your values will make any relationship unlikely to work. Me and Sue are politically different. She's she's a lot more left wing than me, even though she doesn't she doesn't really care about politics. She's quite jaded with the whole thing and doesn't take anything to do it. But whenever we actually do have political discussions, we disagree on a lot. That's that's it really and. We're not going to get a divorce. We don't have full-blown big arguments and domestic domestic instances. Like, no. We just end our discussion and just carry on with our day. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with dating someone politically different from you. So here is a fun Q&A to help you decide what's more important. Your deeply held political convictions or your disgusting sexual appetite. Should you fuck a Tory? The question that has been on everyone's mind. I mean... Whenever I'm down at the bar, it's all we talk about. It's definitely all we talk about. It's a, it's a hot topic. You know, should you, should you fuck a Tory? I've never encountered someone involved in conservative politics whom I found attractive. This is because there simply aren't any. That, that, that's bait. <laughs> This, this is quite a trolley article, which is why I found it funny. There's obviously things that are in here that are just said to be, like, inflammatory and all that, which I li- which is why I like it, because, like, I'm reading it and I'm like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. I see, I see what you did there. Although the same could be said for far left-wing politics or centrist politics or any kind of politics at all, people associated with the Conservative Party are pallid, devoid of power and terminally unfashionable. Not exactly incorrect, like. <laughs> so it's unlikely to be much of a dilemma deciding you don't want to bang them. I don't know. I don't know. I've had uh, I've had experiences in the past. Posh, posh girls, posh girls like a rough boy. They do. That's that's actually true. Posh girls get some sort of thrill out of like banging at a a working class lad who. Throw, throws his fists first and asks questions later. I'm being serious. Po- posh girls actually do like that. They get they get some like weird thrill out of it. <laughs> oh, my my daddy would be so furious. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, but aren't we lying to ourselves if we claim that everyone on the right is unfuckable? Who among us hasn't strolled through the city and felt a twinge of desire and attendant self-loathing for some cold-eyed <laughs> Patrick Bateman in a tight blue suit? Or a husky voice Chelsea siren named Bella. Patrick Bateman, like, Jesus Christ, like, the Tories aren't going to fucking murder you with an axe. Jesus. Allow me to be pious. Because you weren't already. Uh, everyone who supports the Conservative Party is a terrible person. Everyone. Absolutely everyone. No matter your reasons. Absolutely everyone. Again, this, this is all bait. This is all bait. This, this article was... Clearly designed to get rage clicks, and they they made sure to quote the specific people that they could get their rage clicks from. Like this was, this article wasn't written for a left wing audience. It was written for us to get rage bait, to get clicks, knowing that we would share it, knowing that I would make this video on it. But I'm going to do it anyway because it's funny. Like <laughs> it is a funny, entertaining article, which is why I'm making the video, even though it's obviously bait, obviously elicited, like made to elicit this response I'm still doing it because I find it funny like I find this article actually quite amusing uh, they are complicit however tacitly in social murder so- social murder degradation and suffering on an Im- unimaginable scale and uh, so is communism which is why uh, nobody wanted to vote for Labour D- dating a Tory unforgivable shameful stuff being friends with a Tory. Oh, good heavens, no. I mean, you're never ever going to be able to change anyone's pro- like you know, politics, even if you don't like them, if you don't actually have conversations with them. 
There are people on the alt-right that I go for drinks with. There are people who identify as anarchists and communists that I go for drinks with. Because how the hell are you going to change anybody's fucking mind if you don't even speak to them, if you won't have some kind of friendly or even just a professional relationship with them to actually have discussions? See if you've got three groups that have, like, political or any other kind of differences and these three groups are not talking to each other, then those differences and that hatred and that fear of each other is going to be there forever and absolutely nothing is going to get solved. No problems are going to get solved and all of this drama bullshit is going to continue, you know, for the rest of fucking human history, right? So, make friends with people, talk to them, it works, trust me. Look at Daryl Davis. He has proven that it works. Daryl Davis is also just... I just want to shout him out just because I, I fucking love the man so much. Daryl Davis is the guy who befriends Ku Klux Klan members and gets them to leave the Klan. He's a black man that befriends Klan members <clears throat> and convinces them to actually leave. And he was just recently on Rogan. I've only watched the first hour, and it's it's already fucking fantastic. Go after this, just just go there and watch that. He's he's such a fucking interesting guy. Uh, having sex with a Tory before you fa because you fancy them and you think it will be fun and it's been God. How long has it been since you last felt the heat of someone's Elsie's skin? That's now that's a pretty fucking Patrick Bateman comment right there. Uh, life is tedious and lonely. Maybe for lefties. Uh, <laughs> the moments of joy so vanishingly rare. Aren't you owed a spot of erotic bliss? Don't you deserve to feel the profound safety that comes with resting your head on the chest of someone's pecs, even if they subscribe to the spectator? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Oh. Anyway, this you can file under the drinking dairy and buying cocaine and the list of things which are morally suspect and you probably shouldn't do. But really, how much difference is your abstinence going to make in this one instance? Not shagging Tories is not a substitute for meaningful political activism. Maybe we need to introduce a point system whereby spending the day at a left-wing rally or volunteering at a food bank offsets the moral cost of rimming someone who <laughs> stands Jacob Rees-Mogg. Oh, uh, Im imagine rimming Jacob rees -Mogo. Oh dear. <laughs> Would the right honourable gentleman eat eat my ass? Ah, uh, fuck me. But what even is the moral co is that moral cost? Is fucking someone really an endorsement of their politics? Is it crossing a line? Fucking someone doesn't mean you agree with them on everything. Same as having a beer with them or talking to them doesn't mean you agree with them on everything. Like, enough of that fucking guilt by association bullshit. It's not a fucking argument. I mean, even look, everyone goes, have you... You spoke to Tommy Robinson and you went for beers with Millennial Woes. And I'm like, ah, okay then. So all of your friends that you hang out with and are in your social circle, you agree on everything. Absolutely every single tiny little thing you agree upon. Uh, no? Well, shut the fuck up then. Right? There's nothing wrong with speaking to people that you have political disagreements with. How else are you going to change their fucking mind? Uh, but having sex, hold on wait, I fucked that one. Uh, listen, I'm a man of considerable personal integrity and I hold no truck with scabs. Hi everyone who watched Eurovision last weekend. But having sex with a Tory isn't the same thing. It's hard to see who or what cause you're letting down. So if you want to fuck one, just do it and enjoy it. But then leave them on red <laughs> for the rest of their days, forever wondering where, they are, where that loony lefty went. The one who gave them the best fuck of their life Fucking pat, patting yourself on the back a little bit too hard there. Wasn't there a study done that showed that journalists actually have the least sex of any trade? I'm pretty sure there was. I'm pretty sure there was a a study done. I'm just going to... Just, just give, just give me a wee moment. Just give me a wee moment. I'm just going to check this. Yeah, yeah, it was in the New York Post, and it's been in the, you know, it's been in the mirror. Yeah, it's, it's an article that's done the round. Turns out farmers uh, have the most sex because they've got that, they have that uh, trad life, 
trad life, trad wife, and uh, they're banging all the time, and uh, journalists uh, do have the least sex. So I think uh, I think our boy might be exaggerating here. Oh, you 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 don't know him. He go he goes to another school. <laughs> that will teach them for believing in trickle down economics. There's nothing there's nothing trickling down on your chin anyway. Should you fuck a fascist, a Nazi, a member of the alt right now? Obviously, uh, this is the part where me and Sargon are mentioned because unfortunately for Albert, you know he's. He's very, very confident in his dick sucking skills and uh, ass eating skills, but uh, sadly doesn't actually know what a fascist alt right or Nazi is, so, which is a shame. Which is a shame, you know. But I mean, that, that talent had to go somewhere. I mean, it wasn't, and, you know, his talent wasn't invested in what the definition of words actually are, it was invested in uh, sucking dick. Unfortunately, that leads Albert to write articles that, although funny, kind of embarrass himself a little because uh, he uses words incorrectly, but goddamn, goddamn can he eat your ass. Mm. Goddamn can Albert eat your ass. <laughs> it's just a flat out, <laughs> no. <laughs> we can debate the ethics of shagging Tories until we're blue in the face. But it's necessary to draw a line somewhere. You need to imagine that your genitals are a university debating society with a strict no-platforming policy. Mm. <laughs> I enjoy it. Also, if it's got a no-platforming policy, then you can't really call it a debate society. Well, what, you're going to debate all the fucking milk toast ideas and none of the actual really important stuff? Yeah, sounds boring. Sounds pointless, in fact. Uh, there's a history, particularly with certain subcultures of the gay community, of fetishizing the Nazi aesthetic. Uh, yeah, I've 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 actually seen uh, gifs of that stuff. Apparently, there is a there is a lot of Nazi themed gay porn for reasons that absolutely escaped me. I I honestly have no idea why why that's the thing, but you know, whatever. I don't I don't kink shame. Uh, I can just about understand the extreme masochistic appeal of eroticising those who would destroy you, but I have to say I find it distasteful. <laughs> yes, a shaved head can look pretty sick, and yes, Doc Martens make nice shoes. I, I, I actually own Docs. Like, Doc Martens, okay, then back in like the 70s and 80s when the skinheads were at their prime, then maybe, yeah, but Doc Martens were also widely worn by punk like, skinheads were the originals, but Doc Martens were worn by punks for, like, you know, much more prolifically than the skinheads did, so... I don't I don't like the fact that Doc Martens are attributed to the skinheads because it's seen as a, a bad thing when punk popularised them far more. Uh, but if you're wanking to images of the swastika, you need to have an ice-cold bath and a stern chat with yourself. Now, that is a pretty fucking niche fetish. I mean, I've never... I have never found a series of black lines uh, arousing personally myself, but you know, again, I don't, I don't kink shame. Besides the alt right of today, bear a little, bear little resemblance to the scowling jack-booted alphas of gay porn. They are smarmy losers with nasal voices and milkshake sodden suits. Oh, sick burn. Absolutely sick burn. They're smarmy losers with nasal voices. Jesus Christ, you just described every soy boy on the fucking left. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> many of them are vloggers too. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the left are journalists. And you wouldn't want to fuck a vlogger at the best of times, that's this fair. Consider the absolute state of Count Dankula. An appallingly dressed man. Um, it's actually because I can't afford proper clothes. I mean, I can't believe this person who actively will fuck a Tory is sitting here disparaging the working class because they can't afford designer clothes. That's very... Yeah, check check your fucking privilege, Albert. Right, my channel's demonetized. I don't make as much money as you think I do. I buy all of my clothes from fucking Matalan and Comic Con. That's that's where I get my clothes from. God's sake! Imagine imagine sitting here acting like the you know the the valiant the valiant fighter of the working class while making fun of me for not being able to buy designer clothes. I'm I'm sorry, Albert, that I'm not I'm not rich enough to dress the way that you approve of. Who reminds me of every 18-year-old mosher in my hometown who, in a desperate bid to win their approval, would buy bottles of Glens for underage girls. Where the fuck did you grow up? <laughs> fuck me. 
Like, I'll, I'll admit, like, when I was younger, I, I was the 15-year-old that would hang around outside the shop waiting for the local alcoholic or junkie to come past and say, mate, can you go in the shop and get me a bottle of Bucky? Like, I'll admit, I was that guy. Uh, buying it for underage girls, though, no, that's that's not something that I would do. What I would do is I would take the money and I would go, yeah, 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 just, just wait here around the corner. And then I would go in and use the money to buy booze for myself and then run away. Need, need to teach them a lesson. Shouldn't shouldn't be doing that shit. Shouldn't shouldn't be underage drinking girls. However, I can drink, and I'm now drinking with your money. <laughs> also, Glens. Who the fuck buys Glens? Or rape joke lover, Carol Benjamin. That's not exactly an insult. I like rape jokes. I think rape jokes are quite funny. Uh, a man with a vibe of a regional games workshop manager, which I, I'm sorry, like. Everyone, everyone, when I tweeted this out, was saying that is an absolutely solid zinger on Sargon, and it is. That's funny. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, that's that's really good. I'm also starting to think that Albert uh, fucked a Games Workshop manager at one point who turned out to be a Tory, and Albert got his heart broken. I think that's what's happened here. Albert has fucked someone who had uh, political disagreements with him, and Albert had his heart broken. I think that's where this article came from. Also, uh, for the record, I'm uh, happily married, Albert. Very happily married. And uh, I, I, I do, I do very often get to touch a booby. I'm, I'm a cool guy, you see. Yeah, I'm an, I'm an absolute child. Also, also, I've, I've never really had trouble uh, getting laid. But here's, here's the funny thing, which I, which I didn't get, right? See, back in like my teenage years when I was this little skinny thing skateboarding wearing skinny jeans and I had a big fringe that like came down over here list listening to bands like a tray you and shit like that. I used to get laid all the fucking time. Even though I looked like a girl. And then as like emo and all that started to fucking die, all of that started to stop because tastes change. Then I started hitting the gym and getting like more and more tattoos and growing a beard and shit and then I started getting laid again. <laughs> You know, times times change. So does uh, so does women's taste in men. Uh, I wouldn't fuck someone on the far right for the same reason I wouldn't fuck a serial killer. <laughs> it represents such a howling personality flaw. I would, I would say being a serial killer is a little bit more than a personality flaw. <laughs> I would say, I would say it's something a bit more extreme. Uh, such a deep seated coldness that it would simply feel unsafe. I would, I would fuck a woman who was a serial killer. I think I would get a little bit aroused by, like, you know, that rush. Knowing I'm, I, I might die here. I would probably do it just for the rush. Even in the unlikely event that I found them attractive, I'm not convinced about the political utility of a sex strike, a topic which has already been sharply dissected elsewhere. The sex strike uh, doesn't, doesn't work, like, at all. Like, I remember when the sex strike happened and the only people who were, like, under a sex strike who were getting it was, uh, soy boy lefties who probably let their wives, uh, sleep with other people anyway. Like, they were like, we're going on a sex strike and, like, none of the women on the right went on sex strike. Apparently some of them were, <laughs> some of them were fucking their husbands even more. <laughs> so, like, thanks for that. <laughs> but, uh, some people just don't deserve to get laid and ought to be ostracised as much as possible. Like Albert. I don't know who needs to hear this, but don't fuck that Nazi. It's too late. Uh, Nazis, Nazis, alt-righters and that, unfortunately, uh, do have sex, Albert. Mostly with other Nazis and alt-righters who aren't going to listen to you. Should you fuck a centrist? <laughs> if we're talking about died in the will, politically engaged centrist, then I mean... You could. <laughs> like, I love how I love how you made a better argument for fucking Tories, which suggest that shows a little bit of something about you. That shows that you get a little bit of a kick out of that. And it's like, look at that weak argument. I mean you could, but for a Tory you were like, yeah. <laughs> There's not really a moral angle here, but the sex is bound to be terrible. <laughs> how the f how would you know? How would you know? I would imagine that Tories wouldn't be that wouldn't be as good in bed, because they're all conservative and shit like that. You know, no finger up the ass or anything like that, man. They would only choke you at your most explicit request. Um, I don't, I don't really get 
get off on it inflicting even fake violence on my sexual partner but you know okay and even uh, and even they do it in such a fumbling and apologetic manner that it'd be embarrassing for the both of you <laughs> that's weird um there are a few things less er erotic than being a labor moderate but there's an important distinction to be made here. In my experience, most people you encounter who aren't particularly interested in politics but have decent values, your mum, say, or your childhood best friend, or a colleague you've bonded with over how much you hate a different colleague, tend toward a tepid but well-meaning centre-leftism. Maybe you're lucky enough to inhabit a mil milieu. Milieu, I fucking hate this fucking foofy journalism words, man, Jesus Christ. Populated exclusively by people with impeccable socialist credentials. Look at this. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, don't worry, I'll do, I'll do my bit at the end. But I live in a little known place called the real world, and let me tell you, not everyone here is a communist. But I would be ludicrous to abstain from sex with someone just because they never read a verso book. In some ways, someone not being interested in politics is actually preferable. Some, like my wife, Honestly, it's great. It's fantastic. Uh, some of the most abusive, predatory, or simply boring men I've ever encountered have had perfect left-wing values on paper, and to what extent is being interested in politics even a virtue? If all it amounts to is spending every day on Twitter righteously dunking on Toby Young to your 700 followers, all of whom already think he's a prick, then it's barely even a hobby. Yeah. That's actually a fair point. Fair point, Albert. Look at you. Look at you making a point. Uh, someone having lame, banal, or insufficiently radical politics shouldn't be a precursor to sleeping with them, unless they're a member of Change UK, in which they'll probably end up making a blunderous and possibly even racist gaffe just as you're about to come. Which will get me on to my point. Should you have sex with a socialist or a communist? Now, as someone who was a communist at one point, and was involved in communist groups and involved in communist social circles. This was also during the time where I had the big fringe and I looked like a girl, right? Should you? The answer is fucking no. The sex is fucking terrible. Because <laughs> it's all... Oh, uh, yeah, no, none of them had any idea what the fuck they were doing. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't exactly, you know well versed in it myself but see when you see when you grow older and you stop uh, dating little stupid fucking liberal art students and then you go out and actually start dating like real women um yeah it's much better it's much better should you have sex with a socialist or communist no i mean the good thing is the starvation makes them like nice and thin which is which is nice which is nice but then also as you get older you start to realise that you like you like big booties like what's the what's the quote from Alex Jones? <laughs> I like women with big tits and massive asses <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean this is the thing is this article was obviously made to elicit a response and Albert made sure to you know, this is a classic Classic rage bait journalism. Start off with a completely outrageous headline. Say a bunch of outrageous shit. Make sure you mention the people that are most likely going to tweet out the article, rage about it, or make videos on it. So that gets you them clicks, that gets you that rage, and that makes you look good because you can go to your boss and go, look how many clicks my article got. Right, which is why I've had tons of articles like this made about me in the past. They all follow that, see that, you know flowchart that I just described, they all follow that. Make sure to mention the people that are going to signal boost your video because see this article, this is not for left-wingers. This is not for left-wingers at all, this article. This is rage bait. This isn't for anyone to read and think about and, you know, have a coherent thought and makes them think. Right? No, this, this is for the right-wingers to get angry. You know, this, this is the way they've found a way, they've found a way to basically get clicks from right-wingers and make themselves money. That, that is what this article is. This, this is what they do now. This is what they, this is what they have to do to survive. You know, most of, most of the money that these articles get comes from the right. But, I decided to make a video on this one anyway because it actually was funny. It actually has comedic value. I actually found this quite amusing. Right, especially because like it's not all of it's like fucking untrue. This is just Albert's personal preference, and if he was to write about that, that's absolutely fine. I was, I'm still a little bit perplexed that he made a better argument for fucking a Tory than he did a centrist. I mean, I would have, I would have thought you would have preferred that, but I mean, hey ho, it's completely up to you. I'm not one to kink shame. But yeah, like I enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. 
and uh, should you should should you fuck Albert? No, Albert sounds fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs>